Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to play with some granulating watercolors and make these mini landscapes on a single sheet of nine by 12 paper. I love experiments like this because it's just kind of a fun way to relax. You don't have to have a lot of pressure and um, you just get to kind of learn a little bit more about your materials. So I'm taking just some washi tape and portioning off my paper. This is the Artix washi tape. It came in a, a Lunar New Year gift from Artix and I was curious to try it out and it worked really well. It's very low tack, so I think they sell it on its own, but you know, obviously use whatever tape you like, and I'm just portioning off this paper. Now I am using the Hanamule Agave watercolor paper, and um, it acts a lot like a typical cellulose paper. It works really well with granulating paints though, because the water and the paint can kind of puddle up on the surface a little bit longer, and that gives you time for the pigments to separate and settle apart. That's um, and that's really what gives the granulation in these paints, um, what makes them look good. Now, another affordable paper you can use, like, cause the, the Honda Mule Agave may be expensive and it may be cheap. It just depends on where you live. Um, but the Canson Montval paper also has a very similar texture and property to it. So that's a very affordable paper. I would recommend that if you're on a budget and you don't have this. In fact, I'd say they're, they're pretty comparable. So, I wouldn't choose one over the other. Go with what's easier to find wherever you live. Now I'm using clear water just to wet one of these rectangles here. And the key to getting your paints to granulate is to have a lot of water. Now I'm using those um, Masha's watercolors that I unboxed the other day. They were a gift from Masha and Rosie. But if you don't have these and you don't have any like in particular granulating colors. I know that a lot of paint companies are coming out with expensive kits that granulate. You probably have colors that granulate in your palette already. So before you run out to the store to buy some, let's go over what paints make granulate for you already. As you can see, I dipped into my M. Graham palette and I grabbed some Cerulean Blue. That's a beautiful granulating color and gorgeous in skies. Also, Ultramarine and Ultramarine Deep and French Ultramarine all are beautiful granulating blues. You can mix those with other colors and get that granulating effect. And you can shift those blues more green, you can shift them more purple, you can shift into a gray by using an orange or a burnt sienna. Using an Ultramarine and a Cerulean are two ways you can get granulating colors using paints you already have. Another color that I find can granulate is raw sienna. In fact, the Cotman raw sienna I find to have a bit of a granulating effect. I also find that nickel yellow, nickel titanate yellow, and I have an old tube of Cotman nickel titanate yellow, which has a bit of a granulating effect that works really nice. Any of your cobalt colors are gonna be granulating. So cobalt green, cobalt blue, cobalt yellow, which is that PY40 that I could not place my uh, my mind on when I was unboxing that yellow the other day. Uh, those will granulate a bit. Cadmiums, cadmium red. Uh, cadmium Bordeaux was a wonderful granulating color by Renaissance, but if you don't have that, see what cadmium reds you have and um, and go ahead and add those to your granulating palette. A few months ago, I did a video on making a granulating palette using the colors I already had because I thought the granulating sets were kind of pricey. My friend Rosie shared some of her granulating paints with me. That's a great thing about tube paints. You can split the um, split them up with friends, uh, but I was really just gonna use what I had otherwise, and I found that I had quite a good selection. Now, to get the granulating effect on your paper, you really do want a lot of water, and you really want a paper that has a lot of size Sizing. sizing is basically the glue they add to your paper that um, makes the paint kind of sit on the surface rather than getting immediately absorbed in. I had an instructor once who only painted on Wattman paper, which he actually had to buy at auction a vintage stash of it because they no longer make it. Now, if you live in Europe, you probably can find the Milford paper, which is supposedly made from the exact same specs as the old Wattman paper. I've never tried it. I would love to one day, but for now, I find that the original Arches has a lot of sizing, very similar to that paper, I assume. I also find that Canson Montville works really well, Hanamule Agave. Um, um, the Hana Mule Cezanne has a pretty good amount of sizing. So a paper with a lot of sizing will have the characteristics of being able to lift up easily. Your paint will also seem to stay wetter longer on the paper and sometimes puddle a bit. So these kind of, uh, this can actually be a little frustrating for some painters, but when you want to enhance that granulation look, having a paper with a lot of sizing will do that. 
Another thing I've found to enhance her granulation is to use soft water. Now I've also heard some artists say that hard water will increase their, um, uh, their granulation. And I have noticed when I use like the Dr. PH Martin Hydrus watercolors, if I let it dry out on my palette and I reactivate it, then I do get this almost um, silty effect. I don't really necessarily think it looks is nice as a natural granulation, but definitely kind of some of those pigments will clump together a little bit with hard water, but I find that actually soft water will give me a more vibrant color and more of the granulating texture. So if you want to emulate that, you can actually add salt to your clean water and get a little bit of that effect. Now the salt may degrade your paper over time, but if you're experimenting and having fun, I don't see the harm in it. I also don't think it's going to degrade in your lifetime, but that is a chance that you need to decide whether it's worth it for you or not. Um, um, I'm usually erring on the side of having fun and experimenting because a lot of times I'm working in a sketchbook or I'm painting on a greeting card and I'm really not worried about it lasting um, longer than me. So uh, you obviously can take your own um, your own risks there. Now I like to work from a variety of my own palette colors. Single pigment colors I think are always a little more versatile than um, the mixed granulating colors. But if you're a beginner, some of those mixed colors are going to be a lot easier to um, I don't necessarily easy to work with, but you can kind of, um, if you're not comfortable mixing your colors, you know, you have them there. Like the swatch that I have there on the left are from that set of 12 colors from Masha's watercolors, and they have some beautiful multi-pigment mixes. Since your paper is really wet, you can take advantage of techniques such as scraping and scribing on your paper. I'm using an old cut up gift card to scratch in some grasses and uh, you may even be able to scrape away some lighter lines, especially if you have a more blunt scrapey tool such as the back of an aquarelle watercolor brush. Um, when you're doing the granulating paints, I think really less is more, less detail, less scraping. When you scrape, you can end up distracting from some of the beautiful textures that you can get. So I think going for a more abstract effect when you're using these specialty colors will be a little bit more rewarding and you'll get a nicer effect and really let the qualities of the paint show more than your skill as a painter. Now, I don't mean to say it doesn't take skill to work with these granulating colors, not at all, but I am saying that high quality paper and beautiful paint are going to pr produce gorgeous results. So you can let the watercolor do the work. And I think that's the best route of action when you're working with these granulating colors. Now, another benefit of having the highly sized paper is that if you want to go in and lift out something like lifting out a sun or a cloud, it's very easy to do on this type of paper. Now on this next one, we're gonna work a little differently. I'm leaving this rectangle dry and I'm going in with a very juicy loaded brush with this kind of like a tealy blue green color. So you can also get the granulating effect with dry paper as long as you have lots of water on your brush. We're gonna paint a misty, crashing wave, kind of seascapey scene here that's kind of moody and splashy. And I really wanted to be able to control where I put some of these colors. Since they're all pretty similar in color and value, I want to make sure they don't get too mixed up. Now, this is another really good tip. If you're gonna go paint on location somewhere, if you had a sketchbook, even if it was a small sketchbook and you wanted to work on like three or four of these very quick sketches, they, your pages would stick together and especially if you're painting by the coast, it takes a long time for your paint to dry. So I recommend taking like a nine by 12 pad or a nine by 12 block and dividing it up with the tape. That way you could do four little mini wave studies and not have to worry about like your pages sticking together. Now I'm taking advantage of the dry paper and a chisel brush here by painting kind of in between like little um, crests or ripples in the water. So just kind of be very deciduous, deciduous, <laughs> that's not the right word, that's a type of a tree. Decide well, be thoughtful about, um, about where you put your streaks and leaving little gaps of white so you can control where your paint flows. Cause you do need that water to make the granulation happen. And just be very thoughtful about it. Pretend, and I say this to my students a lot that have a, a trouble overworking their paintings, pretend that you're paying per brush stroke. So you're being charged a dollar a brush stroke. So you wanna paint that painting as frugally as possible. So you wanna paint it with as few brush strokes as, um, as you can. And that will keep your work nice and fresh. Like I said, with the 
super granulating pigments, especially if you're spending top dollar on some of these gorgeous mixes, let the paint do the work. It has magic that it can make while it is, uh, while you're laying it down, while the particles of the different pigments are floating around in the water, they will make the magic happen. Now I do have to recommend two different paint tubes that are not very expensive. In fact, I just restocked and spent $5 a tube for 15 ml tubes, very affordable. And that would be the Turner Ultramarine Blue Deep and the Turner Mars Black. I think I like the Turner Mars Black better than any other PBK 11 black I've ever tried. It is extremely granulating, very cool in temperature. It's almost like a blue black. It's very, very black. And uh, both of those colors, man, they just granulate beautifully, gorgeous colors. And with the ultramarine blue supply shortage, I would grab those tubes while you can. I just restocked at Jerry's Artorama. Um, you probably can find them on Amazon, but they will be way more expensive there. Um, so just uh, to give you a heads up on that. I used my spray bottle with a stream mist to really aggressively spray where I wanted the um, wave crash to end up and then blotted it with a rag just to kind of lift out my color gently and to give it that misty quality. Uh, it's fun to play with these paints really and just to see what happens when you experiment. So don't be shy when you're using these. Try different techniques and see what happens. I'm placing some rocks in the background on the wet paper. So you just wanna make sure when you wanna do that, just grab the paint right from the pan, try to keep it as thick as you can. And when you put that down in the wet and damp paper, it shouldn't travel too much, but you'll still get those softer edges you want that give you that kind of misty quality. Like the, uh, the wave has crashed and you're just getting that little haze of mist. It gives you a great atmosphere. The addition of using a toothbrush to spatter on some inky blue paint also adds to that misty effect. One last detail I want to add is some blue water just spilling over the rocks into the foreground to carry the color across and give it that beautiful cohesive look. Now we're going to start on our final painting and I chose a portrait orientated landscape. So when you're searching for photos, especially on Unsplash, which is a copyright free site or a royalty free site that I like to use for commercial use photographs, you can search by the orientation of the painting. And I find this really fun, especially when you're dividing up a page by, um, by cubes like this, you can choose whether you want a landscape orientation or portrait or, or whatever. I started off with some cerulean blue and now I'm adding in one of the blues from the Masha's watercolor sets, which would be a mix. And I'm just kind of letting them mix and mingle on the paper. I'm going to want some yellowy red clouds as well, some kind of like golden clouds. So um, I'm leaving an area with no paint on it, so I'll be able to add that in. I'm starting in the corner with this pinkish color and bringing it across where the areas are white and also in some of the gaps. Now if the colors mix, I'm going to get kind of a purpley gray tone and that's not what I want. So I'm just going to blot that out with a paper towel or a rag. And if you want to have more little bits where the clouds will peek through, you can blot out those areas as well. Now I'm using some nickel titanate yellow. This is the old Cotman lemon yellow. And I'm using that to kind of... Um, give the clouds a little more body. Now, nickel yellow is a granulating yellow. It's very subtle, but it will also give me some of that sky texture that I am after. Keep in mind, when you're doing a sky, the paint's only gonna go where the paper's wet. So I can tip my paper. I don't have to worry about any of that color going into the foreground because I only wet the sky area to begin with. So just keep in mind, your watercolor's lazy, wet the area you want it to go, and let it do the work when you're using these granulating paints to get the most spectacular effects. This rather abstract style of painting is really quite relaxing and meditative because you're going to put a few dabs down, you're going to pull your brush back, look, see how it's going. Here I'm giving a couple sprays with a fine spray mist bottle just to really enhance the granulation effect. It's going to help puddle the paint a little bit so that the colors can settle out. I just used my brush to lift out any puddles so I wouldn't have any cauliflowers that I wasn't expecting because it can be too puddly. Just be aware of that. Now for the foreground area, I'm actually working wet on dry like we did in our second landscape. So I'm using that chisel brush. I'm using some beautiful teals and greens to paint in a little bit of a pond and some foreground mossy grasses and that sort of thing. And I'm letting the colors flow into one another, but I am trying to keep them separate a little bit. I have some kind of rocky areas over there to the right. I've got this uh, really dark, almost black foliage in the foreground with little white flowers and I'm going to leave 
unpainted for a moment and then i'm bringing in some of this mars violet which is really kind of like a oh really like a brownish reddish color I'm bringing some of that up into the mountain. Now, as it touches the sky, if you let that paint on the edge of the mountain kind of kiss the sky, it's going to flood some of that sky color back in, or it might actually flood some of your mountain color up into the sky. I'm not too worried about that, but it is something you want to be aware of. So you may want to leave a little bit of a gap or even let the sky set up a little bit before you go in next to it with some color. You do have to be aware of back runs, but... Um, but you know, it's part of the experimentation. Don't be afraid to see what happens. This gorgeous reddish color here in the foreground is Bordeaux, cadmium Bordeaux, and it's a Renaissance color and it is a gorgeous granulating red. I did find um, a cadmium red of mine in my stash that granulated as well as that cadmium Bordeaux. They're both PR108 colors. So if you wanna look at tubes of paint you have and see if you've got that one, that's a great place to start. Like I said, you probably have a lot of granulating pigments already. They might even be ones that you avoid Avoid. Some of these colors are difficult to rewet, so that can kind of be a killjoy when you're when you're going to paint. So that's another reason I like to keep that spray bottle around that I sprayed the sky with, because I'll give my paints a little bit of a spray before I go painting, about five minutes earlier, and that's going to help some of those mineral colors that can be a little slow to activate perk right up, so you can paint with them easily. I switched to a smaller brush. This is a, a dagger. It's one of the Arteza from the Arteza big pack of watercolor brushes and it's a golden Taclon. So it works really good for agitating the paint in your pans and getting them nice and active. And this Mars Black does need a little bit of agitation. And I find if you want to save some wear and tear on your brushes, using a golden Taclon synthetic brush for getting those paints nice and um, reactivated it really helps because your softer watercolor brushes could be damaged by that. And I have to say another tip I would recommend is putting your paints in larger wells. Half pans are great for sampling colors, but with these um, granulating colors, they tend to need a little bit more agitation. If you have them in a large pan or a large well, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to mix them up, get them activated and get in there with br big brushes. Cause it's so nice to use the big brushes with these paints since you'll probably be painting with less detail and just more juicy color. Whenever I talk about granulating pigments, I always get a few questions in the comments asking, what do you mean by granulation? What is granulation? What's a granulating color? And we did discuss some colors that you probably already have in your palette that will granulate. But when I say granulation and when other people refer to granulating, generally it means this texture that you see in big washes of paint. And it tends to happen when you have a pigment that is either made of a mineral or a heavy metal and it has heavy pigment particles in it. And those heavy particles will settle out in uh, standing water of like really wet washes and then you'll see that texture. And then sometimes you get these beautiful already made pigments you can purchase. They will have a couple different colors in them and when they dry in wet washes, you actually see the colors split apart. That tends to happen when you have at least one granulating color and you can do this at home. You can take your colors and you can mix them up. Say ultramarine blue and ultramarine blue is a very granulating color. You can take that and mix that with like a quinacridone rose, which is a very staining transparent color. Put it on a big wet wash on a heavily sized paper and watch and see what happens as it dries. You're gonna see that you'll have pockets of blue and you will have pockets of pink where they've kind of separated out. You can experiment with the colors that you have and make some of those gorgeous mixes like you would pay top dollar for. So it's just another reason why you should experiment with your paints and see what they can do. But I just want to make sure I went ahead and explained granulation for anyone that may be new to the term or may have been maybe not really clear about what I meant when I say granulation. Another thing I want to mention with granulating colors is just to really try and leave them be. So as I'm going in and touching up some edges, making some of the edges a little crisper where they got a little bleedy into the sky, I'm trying not to really mess with the color I have down too much because each time you paint over an area that is drying, you're basically stirring that paint up again and you're mixing it up. And granulation, the beautiful splitting of, of pigments and settling out of pigments, that effect happens when it's left alone in standing water to dry. If you go in and stir that up again, it's kind of like having um, like a salad dressing, right? And uh, you know, you'd stir that up before you put it on a salad because you want it mixed up. But with granulation, we almost want the opposite of what we want in a salad dressing. We want that oil and vinegar to separate. Okay, we want the pigments to separate out of the water. We want the 
staining colors to separate from the granulating colors. We want to have that dynamic texture and effect. So you don't want to go in and stir things up too much. So I'm going here with the chisel edge of this flat brush, just kind of adding some of the details I want, but I want to leave some areas completely untouched so that I can get that beautiful contrast. So we'll have some detail, but what I really want to showcase here is the texture of the paints. And it's trial and error. Please don't uh, be disappointed if you start playing around with some of these colors and you've got a big hot mess. Oftentimes it looks like a big hot mess, but then when you look the next day, you're like, wow, these are really pretty. And the reason I love to work on small formats like this, like, um, you know, taping up a piece of paper into a bunch of sections or, you know, cutting up papers into circles or using like bookmark sized papers is because it takes the pressure off. You can work really quickly. You didn't spend a lot of time on any of these. We did these in real time. I, I don't want to get fussy with it. And I think fussiness really kills the effect there. So just walk away. <laughs> Seriously, you want to give yourself time to let these dry and do their thing. Now, I didn't want to put a lot of detail or a lot of finishing touches on these, but there were a few little things I wanted to add. This particular painting here, I worked from a reference photo of a field, and there were a few lit up highlighted grasses. So I'm using my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and I have thinned it down with a little bit of water, and I've added a little bit of that yellowy green to it so it's not stark, and I'm just painting on a few blades of grass and just some highlights on the wheat, wheat stalks in front of the sun area. So you just get that little bit of a golden glow. And then I'll also go in with some um, kind of like a sap green color and add some blades of grasses using a liner. And then I'll add in some of the Mars black as well, just so that I can have some darker shadows. But that's it. You know, I don't want to do too much. I did use a toothbrush and some white gouache just to add a little bit of a spritz over my... Um, crashing waves but that was it on the seascape area and then i'm taking the chisel edge of this flat brush and just tapping in little reflections in the water so it's basically just reflecting the light from the sky and because my reference photo had these little white flowers on the foreground i'm just tapping those in with that little dagger brush i mentioned earlier i'm really thrilled with how these came out i love that you don't have to spend a lot of time and you can have some fun and get creative i hope this inspires you to dig out your paints and see See if you have any granulating colors in your palette or if you invested in some of the new specially granulating sets i hope it gives you some inspiration on how to get a little more use out of them don't be afraid of them they're not precious paint with them and enjoy them that's why you bought them that's what they're there for please let me know what you think of this tutorial in the comments below i spent a little more time editing today because i wanted to keep it real time and not time lapse so i'd love to know what you think about this style and please give me a thumbs up before you go because it really helps my channel and it lets me know what you guys like and what you don't really care much about. So again, thanks for watching and till next time, happy crafting.